Hey lovelies, welcome to the Floating with Travel podcast. I'm Lexi. And I'm Misty. And today we're talking about building relationships while being an expat. Hope you enjoy. So today we're talking about relationships, particularly relationships when you're living, living overseas and to some extent I feel like constantly in transit. I don't know, because I feel like you would be in transit if you never had, if you never planted your feet. Like, if you never got out your own place, if you were living in, like, a shared kind of situation where they were forced you with a roommate. I feel like once you get your own apartment that is just yours and you can customize it to your own liking, Mm -hmm. you're no longer transient. Especially if you're there more than a year. So you feel settled? Yeah, I'm definitely settled. But, I mean, you had to have felt settled. You had your own place. I had my own place, but... There was something about it, like, even though I had a moment where it felt like home, it still always felt like a temporary home. So I think the difference would be, well, maybe it's with time. Mm-hmm. The longer you're there, the more you become, like, you assess, or you, you just have to accept that this is kind of where you're at. Okay, I'm with you. So how did building relationships, like, factor into kind of making it a place that felt like home? I, I, well, I mean, I think relationships are everything. It's it's what makes any situation bearable, right? It, mm-hmm. If you can't stand the people and you love the place, you're more likely to leave because you can't stand the people. But if you love the people and it's a shitty place, they can actually make it enjoyable because a lot of times people, we just laugh at the pain. <laughs> just push through. <laughs> I like how you tried to come off and talking about, no, I love being an expat. Everything's great. But I do like to laugh at my pain at every given chance You have I get. to. I mean, those are like the best stories. Like, nobody really likes your successes. <laughs> they don't true. like when you're happy. No one wants to hear about things going well. That is you're like, truth. damn. I mean, life is good. They're like, Pfft. your life's falling apart. Tell me about your life falling apart. <laughs> no, nah, but I think like um, one of the beauties of living overseas is it puts you in a space where you would meet and interact with people that you not you would not normally mm. like expose yourself to. So like for most of the people you know, are they people that you know through work or how how did you like build those relationships? Um okay, so my first friend I met at work, mm. which is always going to be like your ground zero for friends, right? Mm. No matter where you go, those are going to be the first people you interact with. I think um Actually, three of my really close friends are work friends. Mm-hmm. And then I have and some outside friends that I met through people, mm-hmm. but we have a lot in common. So it kind of like you clicked, we travel alike, we shop alike, we have similar thought processes, but who knows if I actually would have ran into those people on my own, yeah. especially in the States, because some of them, a lot of them are not actually Americans. Mm-hmm. So do you think that you would have ran into? No, like... So at least when I got there, I started teaching and most of the people I knew were, were from the U.S. Like half were from the U.S., half from other English speaking countries. And I still don't think I would have ever like run across them in day to day life because the things we studied were different. Mm -hmm. So there is that. Now, do you feel like you have a different, I don't want to say caliber, but like a different type of friend when you meet them overseas? I think long term, you either get one of two type of people. Mm. The people you really click with and are just like you, mm. or like they would be your friends regardless. And people that are just like friend, I don't want to say fringe friends. They're not necessarily like a person that you would have chosen, mm-hmm. but there's so many characteristics or like underlying interests mm-hmm. that tie you together that it's like an odd pairing if somebody saw you. Yeah. Yeah. So it'd just be like, Y'all are friends? But I think I even have that with work friends that I've met in Las Vegas. That you're like, how did you guys connect? And like, well, somehow we did and somehow it works. Right. And you, like, I think when you leave out of like your hometown or in, into a new environment, you start doing different things that you wouldn't have done mm-hmm. at home just to meet people. Mm-hmm. So for instance, like you go to work and you meet people. That's mm-hmm. a normal thing. But like you'll go to um, different coffee groups mm-hmm. or readers groups, lean in groups. I'm part of this thing called American women's league mm-hmm. and they have different things they set up so people can interact and that's how you meet people. Mm-hmm. So you're meeting people based off of your interests 
not necessarily your location. Well, okay. I guess, I don't know if it's, a, is it your location? It could be. I don't, for me, it was really all work. Like, even when I lived overseas, everyone I met, I met somehow through work, either a fellow teacher, a fellow student, or a friend of a fellow teacher, a fellow student. Ah, uh, okay. So, like, it's not like you're just out getting coffee and then you make friends with someone, though. Mm, more times than not, not for me. I met, like, somebody, um, I was at the embassy mm. thing. They had, like, a woman's month embassy thing and I met a person and we we clicked and we got along but then like so this is the thing like culturally when you meet people from different um cultures we all have different thresholds like you don't realize some sometimes how independent you are Mm. or how much their families play a part in it because like I'm I'm living in a different country. Like mm-hmm. if you meet somebody that's local to there, their family is completely there. So oh, if yeah. they were abroad or somewhere where they weren't connected to like where their family was, I wonder like sometimes I think that they would be different. I could see that. So how has it changed you then? No, I think I'm really like who I am is who I am. I don't, I don't think it's really affected me. What I do like a lot is just meeting different people mm-hmm. and listening to life from their standpoint and from their eyes and understanding like how they were raised because although there's vast differences there's a lot of things that like correlate us everybody has a mother that's gonna like get on their nerves or or a sister that they don't always get along with you know what i'm saying people Mm. have a lot of things that start to tie them together if you're a pet lover and you have a dog and they have a dog like oh my god i have a lot you know (laughs) so um for me i don't know i just i'm a to myself person anyway so i don't know (laughs) <laughs> so you're like how do you build relationships i don't i just want yeah. to be by myself what's meant for me will happen the universe will give it to me <laughs> so then like how is it dating and while living in another country i mean man i feel like i have a lot of negative standpoints because i was just about to say i really feel that sometimes people are not their authentic selves mm-hmm. and they can project whatever image they need so Lying becomes very simple because mm. there's nobody to fact check, right? Yeah. Even with social media, people can go to like crazy extents to cover up their their real life as they live their dream. They have their third profile that has like new name and everything. Right. 17 phones. Like, I, I don't know. I think it's, it's difficult to find a genuine person. Mm. Um, but I mean, like, I will say one of the things when I was traveling to Bali, um, One of the ways people meet each other, and well, back then it was 2016 when I went, but they were used Tinder. Like, you Mm -hmm. can get on Tinder and it's not for dating. Like, you're Mm -hmm. just like saying, hey, I'm traveling, you know, let's meet up. Or I think I used uh, Black Travel Movement to meet a couple of people. Mm -hmm. Like, there was this black lady that had her two kids out there with her, and she was giving them hands-on lessons, like historical lessons Mm -hmm. about regions. So what she would read in the book, she'd take you to those places and her That's kids, cool. as black young kids, like seven and nine, I think, mm-hmm. were experiencing this firsthand. Mm-hmm. I thought it was so cool. I mean, like, she was American. I don't know too many black American women would take their two children and they just travel around. She had been traveling around Southeast Asia for like five months. Yeah, that's a different experience. That would be that would be really interesting growing up with that. Mm. But you get to meet people like that, and I think social media makes you you get to keep in touch with those kinds mm-hmm. of individuals. So when you're dating, I don't know. I feel like <laughs> it's really hard sometimes to find genuine people. But I know a lot of people who have found like their special other that they probably would have yeah. never found somewhere else. That is true. I do know a lot of people, especially in Japan, that went there. And 10 years later, still there, Mm -hmm. married with children. And I think that's probably more common in Japan than it would be Kuwait because, like, it's a whole different citizenship game there, though. True, it is. Like, I'm not giving up my privilege to marry you. So, like, with Kuwaiti culture, I know we've talked about it a little bit as far as it's it's male-centric, but how how does that work if, like, you were a guy who went there and you wanted to get married? Or you found someone you were trying to get married. Would that work? I I mean, like... They'd have to be a very Western family, a Western-minded family Mm -hmm. that 
accepted outsiders. But you have to think like Kuwaiti privilege is Barna. It's like one of the best things to have. They give their residents stipends because they are an oil producing company or country. Mm -hmm. So they get a monthly stipend um, just for being Kuwaiti. And the only way that you can get that is if you are born to a male Kuwaiti. So if the uh, man decides to go outside and marry another uh, race or um, nationality. nationality, they'll eventually get the citizenship and their children will get it. But if a woman decides to go outside and fall in love and marry another nationality, she forfeits and loses all the benefits of being a Kuwaiti. She's still Kuwaiti, but she won't get the stipend. She won't get oh. any of it. She gives up all of that privilege. So it's not like it just doesn't extend to your children. It just cuts off for you. It's like you just gave up your citizenship, but you still get to keep the passport. Right. And your kids don't get it. Wow. Because it's, it's male centric. Plus your family has to buy off on it. You know, mm -hmm. most times they're not going against their, their parents' wishes. Like you don't disrespect your family. They mm -hmm. are serious. Plus I think the culture is like, so that country really pays. Mm -hmm. To ha so the father gets money for the kids in his house. He gets money for his wives because you can have, I think, up to four wives. But you wow. have to be able to afford all of them. But you get paid. Like, the country gives it, and then you give it back, right? Like, mm -hmm. you're, it's a benefit of being. So um, most of the time, I've, I've seen men marry the women. And I've, I've been where, you know, if there's these posh women who are just like, my husband's Kuwaiti. And just like, okay, bitch. <laughs> but as a, I, I would look at a woman like she, she must have really had to marry up for her to just give up that right that privilege because you can always go back and they'll like they're really big on um, taking care of their their citizens like they mm -hmm. do they have enough money that they'll make sure they take care of them so like dating in uh, in that culture say you wanted to like some people are just because Kuwaitis are really handsome like they have really good bone structure mm -hmm. and you're just like why would I not date them I mean, they'll date you, but it's for fun, you know? Oh, okay. Because eventually they're going to marry one of their own first. Their first marriage is definitely going to be... Well, that's interesting for a man because you'd think that he'd have more options. Like, it literally sounds like the entire world is open to him, but not necessarily for the female. Right. But even in the man, like, men choose who their, their moms pick for them most of the time. Oh, gotcha. So you still have to go, like, you have to... They, I don't know. I don't think... I think you... You get a period where you get to bear and do whatever you want, but most of the time you come back because they are very tied culturally. Like I respect it. I think it's really impressive. So when you're going out there dating, that like you it's just like a non option. Gotcha. So even though like you stay cupcake and we all know this about you, but like no no Kuwaiti cupcakes? No. No. So if if there's kind of that division in culture, do you not have like Male Kuwaiti friends? Uh, not really. I have a couple. But you have... Because I know you have female Kuwaiti friends, right? Mm-hmm. And then I have um one of... Yeah, so I have I have some of both. But, mm -hmm. you know, like, it's different. Each are just... you. They have, like, they have a whole threshold that they'll go and then they'll stop. Because mm -hmm. they have to really, like, fall into their norms. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think like you have different mediums of meeting mm -hmm. people. You have to go out of your way to meet new people. You mm -hmm. have to really open yourself up mm -hmm. and learn how to um, converse. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, you're not going to meet people. You're going to be stuck with the same people you're always around. And if you really want to date and like really meet, you have to open yourself up. I think being living overseas really pushes you out to like get out there. Okay. But you don't feel like it's changed who you are as a person? Like being there and... Having to grow and create new relationships. Because, like, when you showed up, you didn't know anyone, right? No. Because you showed up for work, so you have, basically, your built-in co-workers as far as relationships. But was that something that you were comfortable with? Just, like, starting from scratch? I went with a thought process that I wouldn't really know anybody and mm -hmm. wouldn't make friends mm -hmm. and would just take a lot of solo trips. Okay. So my mind was already made up that once I got there, I was just going to travel by myself and eventually meet people. But I would be, um, I wouldn't really, you know, fall in line because mm -hmm. I just wasn't going to, I just happened to have an experience where I met pretty much everybody I've been hanging out with in the beginning for six mm -hmm. months. So when you went, were you expecting to be there for a long time? 
No, I thought I'd do like a year and then my year turned into two and then two turned into three and now three <laughs> is four and I'm like, this is it. And I'm just, I don't know. So it, like, is it literally just monetary or does like do the relationships that you've built over there have something to do with like staying? Yeah. Some of my friends are just like, no, we're all leaving together. But if we all don't have the plan to leave together, how are we all leaving together? Like if you're standing <laughs> over here for two more, five more years, mm-hmm. I don't want to be here for two, five more years. I've already did my two, five more years. Okay, so everyone's like, we're all leaving together. Do you actually have like a year in mind? Like, 2034, we're out of here. <laughs> I don't know. I just know that I can't allow somebody. Because you do, you're just like, well, if you were to leave, it would change the entire dynamic. Mm-hmm. And that's what you start missing people when they leave. Well, I mean, that kind of has happened to you. Because you've had like people that you started over there like from from jump with and that have gone. So how did that change? Like when... Basically, your favorite person over there just ups and goes. Uh, you have to, it's like a whole readjustment. You mm-hmm. just really have to think about like different bonds become tighter and then some friends like separate. So we had like a really group, um, there was about five people that were really tight mm-hmm. and then they all eventually left because, you know, jobs go and different things happen and it's just like, oh, okay, so what do I do now? Mm-hmm. And then you're forced to go out and remeet people and because then it's just you and traveling. And even though traveling is awesome, like traveling at the pace that we travel can get expensive. So yep. then it's just like, okay, so we got to do some stuff in the, in the place we live. So what do you do in Kuwait? Like, what do you do for fun in Kuwait then? Oh, such a good question. Um, I really feel like I don't do anything for fun. I hang out with my friends. Because we go eat together, we'll do coffee. I mean, we have like routines. So we every Friday morning mm-hmm. we go do breakfast at this health food spot, uh, talk mess, and then um, the gold shop. You're always either eating, smoking shisha, or drinking coffee. Mm-hmm. All right, those are three staples. That's you're, you're always meeting people to eat, <laughs> smoke shisha, or drink coffee. Can you imagine yeah. how hard it is? You're gonna get fat. Like you're always doing something that is sedentary because it's not really safe to walk around as a woman there. And mm-hmm. there's not really that much walking space. Yeah. And, um, I mean, sometimes we go do pool days and you start organizing events. Mm-hmm. That's when you see who can really organize an event. So who's the organizer of your group? Is it you? No. I mean, sometimes I'll do game night at my house. My friend, she does her rooftop parties and barbecues a lot. So she all hosts or we'll find somewhere we'll go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did something on the beach the other day. It was really not, not the other day, three or four weeks ago. It was different. It was interesting. I it mean, because you can't like, yeah, it's still warm. Oh. You can't dance. It's haram. So or it's oh. it's no, you can't do it. So you can't really have loud music and when you actually want to get up and dance. No, there's no dancing. Why are you living in Footloose? <laughs> Footloose. I'm in this Footloose. town with no dancing, no music. It's all illegal. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Like you go to a concert. I went to this Cuban, uh, it was like a Cuban band. They had paid for this Cuban band to come mm-hmm. from Cuba. So you can imagine how they are, right? Mm-hmm. And they're up there all singing dancing. and they're like, la, 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 la. And they're getting into it. And they're just like, why is everybody just sitting down? Like, Oh, there wasn't a dance floor, right? Like, of course it, not. They did it in an auditorium with like rows of seats. Oh. So then you're sort of like, everybody's just like, okay, we're just going to get into it, right? Next thing you know, this, this man with this long ass, like, if it looks like an extended wire coat hanger, mm-hmm. just reaches out and taps you, like, sit down. Oh, like, you better not dance. Right. They stop you. So everybody has started getting up. They were like getting into it and they're like, back. And if they had to touch <laughs> you again, they're going to kick you out. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not, it is for loose. I didn't think about how quickly does that kill, like, a mood in a place? Quickly. And then they do this clap thing I absolutely hate. Because they don't dance, they, they do the clapping. And it's just so irritating. Like, to the beat? No. It's just clapping. And it's, like, a really loud clap because they clap like this. So you have all that right there. It's just, oof. Have you seen the meme of, like, Nicole Kidman at some uh, party? And she's clapping like this, but her fingers were distorted, so they look super long. That's all I imagine is a bunch of Nicole Kidmans. <laughs> <laughs> right like, I, was at, that, I was at an open mic night and that's what they were doing <laughs> I had such a headache I was they gave me a headache I was like I gotta go home and lay down I do not feel good oh goodness but you said so it's like imperative that you have people you like because then it makes the situations better mm-hmm. so you because you have to like those people right yeah and you actually actually create a real fondness for them 
Mm. So I have really good people that even in this, like if I was at home, they'd still be my friends. Well, that's awesome. So for anyone who's like moved away, do you still get to see them? Do you still like travel? Do they still visit you? Yeah. So, um, sometimes a lot of my friends, they've moved back. So I'm, I need to, I need to make a better effort to make sure I see them. But sometimes, like, there was this Destination Dubai thing. Mm -hmm. I saw a couple people that they came over for that. I got to see them there. Um, And then I see them when I come to the States in Atlanta. I see most of my friends in there. You know, I will say, it is hard making an effort to see people, though. Because, like, that's what's great about social media for me is that, like, I could never get rid of Facebook because a lot of people I've met, they're, they're there, and so you get to keep up with their mm-hmm. life, but in a not very active way. And so I do want to be better about that. It's like, just check in and say, hey, how's it going? Haven't talked to you in a while. Well, especially if you were close friends. I mean, like, why would you not? Like, I mean, so there's normal level of being on the phone and, like, talking to people, and then there's your level of being on the phone and talking to people, which is weird. It's, like, weird. On vacation, miss, you're on the phone all the time. Like, first thing in the morning, well, I got to call and check on them. This is my 5 a.m. call. And then I've got my 7 a.m. scheduled with so-and-so. And And then, like, at 7.30, I get off the phone and I start my text conversation. Then we start FaceTiming with this other person. I'm like, who all are you checking on? Well, you know, just everyone. You got to stay in touch. But we're on vacation. I know it's lunchtime, but <laughs> you know at noon what happens. Right. I've been upset. They do that too when they go away. Like we do this... do FaceTime calls. Actually, I've gotten, I've not done well enough this go around. So I've not been checking on people as much as I should have. <laughs> my friend, she called me yesterday. She was like, so I just wanted to call so you could see my face. Because since you forgot about me. I was like, you know, calm down with this. I know. I have to. But then I was like, did you water my plants? She was like, if you call me back, I'll water them. I'm like, it's been two weeks. <laughs> Uh, those plants are dead. I hope not. Those are my babies. Okay, so I don't think the feds are listening. <laughs> you can actually tell stories about your friends. I have been telling stories. I didn't realize I wasn't saying their names. <laughs> I mean, I guess I did realize that because I was putting they, them, and those in. <laughs> you sure were. What? You weren't even given like real pronouns. <laughs> you weren't like him or her. They <laughs> went here. Right. I was with them today. Um, Okay, so where were we? We were saying, okay, the best part about being Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) friends overseas. Yes. So how, so when you talk to them, (laughs) what kind of things do you do? Well, they, (laughs) um, so, okay. I've had some really, I've made really good friends. Mm -hmm. One of my friends' name is Tracy. That's her name. Real person. Tracy even shouted out. Uh, (laughs) Tracy went to London with us. But she, when she left Kuwait, she wouldn't have lived in Thailand for like eight months. She's the best budgeter I know in life because. She was so serious with that. So we talked about how (laughs) Thailand was a trip that I showed up with like $100 for the week. Right. We went the second time. And you know what? Watching her live, I was like, oh, I could make this work. She was living on $5 a day. Like, that was all she had to eat. And every, like, two weeks, she said she could splurge Mm -hmm. and maybe spend, like, 30. But she Mm -hmm. was making it on, like, $900 and still was doing a bunch of stuff. Well, what's crazy is that she wasn't eating poorly, though. Like, in Thailand, you can actually live on that in Bangkok. Like, if you're in, I don't know... Phuket, you're probably not going to be able to make that work. But in Bangkok, the street food is phenomenal. And she was showing us where to go. She was. I remember she told me, she's like, I went to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. I went to the grocery store. And you know they have just minced pork. Mm -hmm. Just there, you just scoop it up and put it in a bag like you're picking up fruit. What? And then they weigh it. And that's when you buy it. She was like, you can live forever on this stuff. But she's a vegetarian, so she doesn't really eat meat like that. (laughs) Um, But she was saying, like, it's possible. She would go to the grocery store and get, like, Foods for a salad, sautés, mm-hmm. and she could live on, spend $10, and that would be the whole food for the week. So my favorite Tracy memory was the boat and getting off the boat. <laughs> didn't she fall on the platform? Oh, she didn't fall into the water. So <laughs> <laughs> when? Because that would have been embarrassing. Who's so, getting in that water to get her? Oh, I wouldn't have. She would have been in whatever river that was in Bangkok. Right. But it was like this weird water taxi, and... 
it, it never stopped, which to me <laughs> seems super dangerous. Like, why does it keep on going? It can't stop and let you on the boat, and there can't be a platform with stairs. It did kind of stop for like a second. Like they would tie it for a second. I remember she. I thought it was gonna be you. Didn't you like fall out? Of the boat? No, I was doing surprisingly okay. I was, yeah. Your coordination was better than I expected. Ouch. That's hurtful. Well, that we're going to have to post that video. We're going to post a video of the boat so that you guys can see how it just like keeps chugging along and you got to hop off the pier. Like the locals are fine. The rest of us were just like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? It's like double ditch, but it's way worse. But it's like, it's lower. So it's not like you're doing a one for one step. No. You're like climbing out of a boat onto there that's and rocking tracy was great because she just like flopped her like front <laughs> half of her body up there and then like right? the boat's still moving so the bottom half of her body you can just see it moving you think what if the boat carries her away and then she falls into the water this water looked disgusting so she would have been in there she would have had to climb her way didn't out. we grab her because we thought she was gonna fall I mean, I don't know if I was part of the uh, rescue mission, <laughs> only because you never know how someone's going to go, whether they're going to take everyone down with them. This is true. But you, I mean, friend indeed. Yeah, so Tracy was awesome. When she left, it was a hard, it, was, it wasn't that much of a readjustment because I have another really good friend mm. um, that is there. So we hang out all the time. We have similar uh, debates, which help make it so much better. I mean, we didn't realize that we were the two angry black women that everybody was like, why do you guys keep having these shitty ass experiences? I'm like, doesn't everybody, like you're all not encountering like fights at the grocery store? They're like, no. You've had a fight at the grocery store? Man, so I was in the grocery store. It was for Thanksgiving. So mm -hmm. we were doing a friend's Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and it was about 15 of us that were coming mm -hmm. and we were doing it at Lukey's house. And when we, I, we were supposed to all cook. So Lukey, I, and Tracy were all supposed to cook. Mm -hmm. These two decide that they're going to be brilliant <laughs> and buy Thanksgiving meal at Dean and DeLuca. And I'm just like, who wants a bought turkey? We were supposed to make the turkey. They were like, nah, it's brilliant, Misty. You don't even have to cook. I was <laughs> like, I'm cooking. I'm still doing my butternut squash soup made with love. So How I made- turkey though? It was all right. It tastes like store-bought turkey. Not made with love. That's mm -hmm. what I do know. So I was in the grocery store in the butternut squash section mm -hmm. looking at these vegetables. And this man had been following me around. Like I tell you all the time. It's just, I don't know why. I just, I don't know why it is. He had been following me around trying to get my attention. I had been ignoring him on purpose. Mm -hmm. Doing great. Diligently staring ahead. Acting like as if I didn't see him. And so he got so frustrated that when I'm out there and I'm at like the little vegetable stand and I'm mm -hmm. picking up the butternut squash, I'm like, oh, okay, this is the one I want. He's like, hey, I was like, mm. He's like, hey, I was like, mm. <laughs> so next thing I know with his <laughs> cart, he goes like this, bam, and like hits me with it into the vegetable stand. I, I actually moved. <laughs> I turned around. Oh, I was no. like, this motherfucker. I grabbed the cart and I pushed it back into him. And I was like, leave me alone. And he's just like, number. I'm like, what is wrong with you? So I tell the little lady that's the, because there you have to weigh your vegetables. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, tell him in Arabic to leave me the fuck alone. And she's just like. With the language and everything? Yeah, I wanted her to tell her, tell him just like that. She's almost, it's almost like she was just like this. Like she was a clone. Zoned the fuck out. She was like, I'm not in this. I wouldn't be in it either. So he said number again. I said, you. Hit me with that motherfucking cart again. We're going to have a problem. Knowing that he doesn't speak the language. I, then I just like pushed my cart into his cart and I walked off. And then I was like, let me check out and get out of here. <laughs> right. They'll just keep following you. It's just ridiculous. But, you know, she has these experiences too. I'll tell you one of hers. She was at the mall mm -hmm. and the aggressive part. So she was at the mall mm -hmm. and she wanted this. It was her turn coming around and she was going to take this spot. I'm not sure where this other lady came from, but as soon as she started turning in, the lady started turning in, Ooh. right? So now in Kuwait, nobody is considerate. We just all go for the spot. Whoever gets in it first makes it, right? <laughs> so they both go for it, and mm -hmm. what happens? Their car is hit. So the lady gets out the That's car. That's a different level of aggression to actually let your car get hit. Yes, just fuck your car. Like, nobody cares. Okay. Because you're not... Mommy ain't ready no hope. I'm not giving up my parking space. So she did not give up her parking space. Oh my goodness. So they hit. And now the lady gets out the car yelling at Lukey. So then Lukey gets out the car yelling at the lady. Mm -hmm. And it's the Burka gang. We call them the Burka gang because they're all in, you know, the black cover up. 
right? And now she's getting other people involved in it. Like, did you see this? Did you see this? And she's like, call the police. And Luki's like, call the police. Because now they have to figure out who's at fault. Because now she's trying to get Luki to back out of the parking spot. It's not even about who hit the car. It's just the fact that she still wants that parking still spot. Still wants the space. So literally, if Luki had just backed out of the parking spot, it all would have been done? It possibly could have been done. Yes. But, but I she, assume that's not what happened. No, she wasn't giving up the space. I wouldn't give up the space either. I think eventually something happened. Oh, some man came and intervened and was like translating. Like, it's not that serious. <laughs> It'll be okay. And then um, that was it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the Luki was like, she said she came to her senses because she was just like, fuck this, let me go. Because I'm leaving in two days. I don't need this. Right. You never know who they are. You don't know who they know. And sometimes um, you can really like, get jacked up because somebody's family was somebody important mm -hmm. and you're sitting there like I did all this. <laughs> it's not worth it right so that's my buddy in crime we sit there and uh talk about our horrible stories together <laughs> we walk around get profiled together all the time you know fun times interesting okay but have you guys gone on trips together oh yeah we travel all the time together i went to london for new year's with her because she had just closed on her apartment. Oh, nice. Um, that was a cool trip. I mean, that was just a last minute, let's get out of Kuwait. I mean, who doesn't just do a last minute New Year's trip to London? That's She's like from London, so that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. She also was closing on her apartment, so it was a free stay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not making it sound any less glamorous. That you literally had a tour guide that knew the lay of the land, but whatever. Regular life over here. Uh, well, you know. I, I just don't know. I think, so this, that's the other thing. It's just about getting used to who you travel with. We all travel mm -hmm. the same. Sometimes I don't upgrade. Sometimes she always upgrades or she buys the first classic. So I get left in the regular people line and she gets to go through the business line. I mean, she'll let me tag along every now and then, but like, I love that reaction. I mean, sometimes I don't even upgrade. Do you know how normal I am? Yes. Do you know how long the other line is? I do know how long the other line is. <laughs> I am permanently in that line. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm just I've like, she left me. It. So then she was like, I can't believe you didn't upgrade. I'm just like, well, I wanted to buy the wallet or the purse. So I just had to like, I had to make decisions here. I mean, that is a very true fact of life. So with people that you meet over there, especially because Kuwait is like a shopper's paradise, like those malls are on a different level. Do you find that you have like one half that's all about like the shopping culture where you're like, yeah, we're about to go get this purse or, and then the other half is about travel. Like I'm upgrading every time and I'll forego it. Or is it like we do both? No, some people, so everybody has different budgets. Mm. Some people are not shoppers. I mean, shopping is actually expensive. I call it the Kuwaiti tax. Mm. It's more money when you buy there because of the importing of goods. Makes sense. So you could actually just save it. Spend the money, go to Dubai, and actually get it cheaper. Even in Dubai, because it's still imported. True, but for some reason, it's a bit cheaper in Dubai. Huh. And then if you can order online, like that's the way to go. But if you live on the economy, then you don't have a way to get the USPS system. Um, but if you have, if you work on like an American base, you can get those benefits. Mm -hmm. So you, you have those. So a lot of my friends, they just use my mailing address. Ah, uh, okay. Did you ever live on the base in Kuwait? Or did you, like, immediately move into... Oh, no. We can't live on it. It's, it's not allowed. Oh. Only military members live on the bases in Kuwait. Also makes sense. Yeah, they don't have space for us. That also makes sense. Right, so... Okay. I went into company housing, and then I went straight into my own apartment. So you work with the military. Do you have any military friends over there? Or is, like, everyone just expanded it up? Well, so the military is, is different. It's like a hardship duty station. Mm -hmm. So if they can get a pass, like if they're allowed to leave the country, then I have traveled. Like I travel more so on work trips with them mm -hmm. because that way they can go. But um, most of the time, they're the freedom, they don't really have the freedom. So you probably would if you were in like Korea or even like Osaka, somewhere mm -hmm. like that, you would travel more with military personnel. But uh, that's not really a thing. So. Okay. I guess that makes sense. And so, any advice you'd give for someone like moving to a new place to like how to build their? Oh, their be group? open. Understand. I guess you keep saying that I changed. I don't know if I changed. I don't think I changed. Mm -hmm. I'm very cemented. However, I do feel like 
when you're meeting new people, mm-hmm. you just have to be open to to different experiences and understanding different like cultures, like Yorkshire Yorkshire pudding. Mm-hmm. That's like a British thing that they love for holidays. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's just deflated bread with some bland ass gravy. But you know, like you don't want to like knock their food; it was right. tasteless. Okay, you feel that way. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is the second time I've actually heard you put down Yorkshire pudding since we've been doing this. You really do not care for it. It's like it's the bread that like fail. I feel like it's like flan went wrong, except for it's not flan. But it is indeed not flan. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I but I just think that you just have to be open every. Always be open to the do the different and new experiences and the people that come along because they do add value to your life in some circumstances. But you should be particular about who you allow yourself around because some people are just shit people no matter where they're at. Well, damn. There's that. She said what she said. <laughs> okay. Well, that is uh, building relationships as an expat. Bye.